dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly we hail. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. This is C.P. McGregor welcoming you to Proudly We Hail, the United States Army and Air Force presentation, soon to be a full half hour. Our story is A Flight to Saskatoon, starring Robert Hutton as Jeff Carter. And now, Act One. Jeff Carter had an airline franchise out of Nome when planes were new to Alaska. And there was plenty of times when he'd have sold out for a good second-hand dog sled. Flying was tough, building a new business hard. But at the end of the third year of operation, things began to look up. And Jeff felt that at last he was getting a handhold on a favorite dream. I certainly did. Things looked good. I had my business in the black for the first time in three years. There was only one major headache, a $5,000 note held by old man Fitzgerald, who owned the Bank of Nome, half the town of Nome, and most of the countryside. I called on him that morning at the bank to talk about that note. I had rather hoped he'd be in a good mood. Mr. Fitzgerald? Sit down, young man, sit down. No, me. Trouble, trouble, trouble. What's the matter, Mr. Fitzgerald? It's that son of mine, Donald. What's wrong with Don? He's an income poop. That's what's wrong with him. First, he wants to be a farmer. Moves down to Saskatoon, a thousand miles from nowhere. That little town is coming along. Well, maybe it is, but my son isn't. He wanted some cows. I bought him ten head. They cost me plenty. And you know what happened? What? He's only getting five dollars a quart for the milk. Giving it away. He certainly is. And furthermore, he's got three dry cows already. Aren't producing a thing, but eating plenty. After I drummed it into his head how to take care of him. Why, I didn't know you were a farmer. I'm a farmer when I've got money in cows. But those cows are only the half of it. Now his wife is expecting a baby, my grandchild. And do you think I can get him to bring her to Nome where she can get the proper attention? Well, after all, that adds up to him. Hmm. If I had him here, I'd chew his ears off. Now, what's on your mind? Oh, oh. <clears throat> well, nothing, nothing at all. I just dropped in to say hello. Well, is that all? That's, that's about all. I do hope for everyone concerned the cows turn out all right. Well, that was no time to talk about my note with old man Fitzgerald. I waited a week or so before I saw him again. Then I crossed my fingers and I was cheered by his first words. Ah, uh, the cows are doing fine. Three dry ones all giving milk. But don't talk about those cows to me. Why is that? Why, it's getting so that boy thinks more of those cows than he does of his own father. Talks about them in his letters until I'm fit to be tied. But uh, what's on your mind today? I guess it's now or never. Mr. Fitzgerald, I came down to talk about my note to the bank. Well, uh, what about it? Uh, as you may know, the new mail contract goes into effect the first of the year. It's going to mean a lot to me. Yes, yes, well... In addition, I, I have several new air freight contracts which will come in next year. But uh, what about now? Your note is due in 60 days. I looked at it, at it yesterday. Oh, that's the point, Mr. Fitzgerald. I, I'd like to get an extension on the note. I'm sorry you said that. Why? Young man, I've always admired you. Like the way you did business up until now. What do you mean? I don't like people coming into my bank begging me. I'm not begging anything from you. You certainly are. I've done business one way all my life. Pay and pay on time. I expect people I do business with to do the same. But I just can't meet that note now, Mr. Fitzgerald. Well, what's the matter with you? You set your own rates, don't you? That's right. Yeah. Then jack them up. Pour it on them. Make them pay to fly. I can't charge more than is justified. Then you deserve to go out of business. Why, you've got to be hard-headed. Why, the way this country is booming, you can get whatever you ask any time. I know that. Well, there you are. That's the answer to your problem. And that's all the help you're going to get from me. I left the bank with several homicidal thoughts for the old bandit who owned it. I prepared to fly to the States. 
There was a rare chance that I might be able to raise the money. But the first heavy snowstorm of winter put a stop to that. At the height of the storm, I, I got a surprise. A summons from old man Fitzgerald at the bank. But so very friendly. Why, well, he even said that he would work something out in the note. I wondered why. Then, then he laid a telegram before me, and I began to understand. It was from his son, Don, and it read, New arrival to family this morning. Premature. Need help. The old man waited for me to read it and then exploded. That nincompoop. I told him to get his wife up to Nome. So I remember. There they are, in trouble. Isolated. Can't even get a telegram through to him. Well, can you fly down there? I think so. You think so? Huh? There's one thing, Mr. Fitzgerald. My new race to Saskatoon. I'm not thinking of money at this point. Um, how much will it be? Well, the round trip to Saskatoon now costs five thousand dollars. Five thousand dollars? Why, you, 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 you tripled the fare. Well, Mister Fitzgerald, yes or no? That's highway robbery. I should think out of you, man. Well, I'm a hard-headed businessman. Yes or no? What can I say? <laughs> Pause briefly from our story, Flight to Saskatoon, starring Robert Hutton, to bring you an important message. For some high school graduates, education stops when they start working. But when you enlist in the regular army, the important part of your education is just beginning. Here's what I mean. In the army, you'll have the opportunity to learn a specialized trade or technical skill. You'll become an expert in such trades as radio, electronics, automotive mechanics, and many others of benefit to you in civilian life as well as in the army. In addition, you'll have numerous opportunities for additional schooling in subjects up through college level. Yes, your Army career will be high-paying and will give you many chances for continued schooling. Make it a point this week to investigate the advantages of an Army career. Get the details at your nearest Army recruiting station. <laughs> Now, Act Two of Flight to Saskatoon, starring Robert Hutton as Jeff Carter, pioneer owner of the air flight franchise out of Nome. The storm over, Jeff is ready to take off to Saskatoon in response to the storm-born telegram announcing the blessed event. Fitzgerald is impatiently trying to hurry things at the airport. Where is that flyer? Oh, he's over there. Jeff! Jeff! Here I am, Mr. Fitzgerald. Well, what about it? When do we get started here? Just as soon as the plane is ready. Well... Why all this delay? My son Donald wires me for help, and I expect action. You'll get it. Just hold on. But minutes count. My son and daughter and my new grandchild are down there in Saskatoon alone. Listen, I'm flying a plane, not driving a sled. I've got to be sure. Well, she's ready, Jeff. Oh, uh, I'll be going now, Mr. Fitzgerald. Good. Young man, I'll tell you something. I don't mind being blackmailed out of $5,000. Just bring me back a grandchild and make my grandchild a son. I'll do my best. I felt a great responsibility as I left. And I also had a feeling of sympathy for the old man. But I hated the skin that face to the man. The accident was a rough on my part. I do. But the old man had asked for it. The flight to Saskatoon was a short one. I, I had the keys on the plane, and I sat her down in a field near Don's house. Pretty as could be. I no sooner piled out of the plane than I saw Don heading through the snow toward me. Hey! Hiya there, Jeff! Hello, Don. Oh, boy, am I glad to see you. Congratulations. Everything all right? Sure, fine. The old man turned you down? That's right. But you seem surprised. Oh, I am. I thought my wire would get results. Uh, a spread, maybe, but not an airplane. How much did you charge him? Plenty. <laughs> well, I hear the end of that. Oh, I think he'll be very happy when he sees what I bring back. Well, he's going to be surprised. I promise you that. Well, let's get up to the house. We can't waste time. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you mean. Well, if that's everything, I'll get started back. Mrs. Fitzgerald, I'm so happy for you. Oh, well, thank you. I'm pretty proud of you, too, my darling. 
Ah, uh, let me see. Let's see. You want uh, baby bottles, blankets, diapers, safety pins, the, the, the whole work. <laughs> That's right. Oh, and uh, don't forget the bottles, Caroline. Oh, uh, I won't. Well, goodbye, Mrs. Fitzgerald. Goodbye, Jeff. And thank you so much for everything. I'll walk out with you, Jeff. Now, uh, <clears throat> I'll take the best of care of your pride and joy. I know you will. You still don't think you should fly back? Well, I don't think it's necessary. Anything I can tell your father, he'll be waiting at the airport. Well, just tell him I can't wait to write him a letter with a whole wonderful story. Well, young man, you didn't fail me. I'm afraid I did, Mr. Fitzgerald. What do you mean? Oh, uh, what happened? I guess you're going to have to wait a couple of months for that grandchild. But the wire said a new arrival in the family. Don wanted to get help, but he really didn't expect the plane. You see, his favorite Guernsey cow had a calf. Oh, no. Oh, no. Where is it? Right here in the plane. Well, a little milk calf. Cute, isn't she? Expensive, too. Mr. Fitzgerald, I, I wouldn't think of holding you to the price we set for this trip. Now, wait a minute, young man. You'll get every nickel of that as soon as I can get back to the bank. My word is bond. Besides, this camp is going to be all right. Isn't she? Oh, she's going to be fine. Well, uh, I'll get my money back. May take time. What with fresh milk selling up to $7 a quart. <laughs> curtain falls on the final act of Flight to Saskatoon. Our star, Robert Hutton, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. How many employers give you a choice of jobs? Uncle Sam will give you high school graduates your choice of training in the Air Force. That's right. You tell your local Army recruiting officer what Air Force technical school you wish to attend. Then after you have been accepted for the school of your choice, you sign the enlistment papers for three, four, or five years. That's a fair deal, isn't it? Get your application today at your Army recruiting station. Now, here again is our star, Bob Hutton, and our producer. Thanks for a swell performance, Bob. And before you go, we want you to sign our Proudly We Hail guest book. Why, I'd be glad to, C.P. But that book looks like a who's who in Hollywood. You're putting me in pretty fast company, aren't you? Right where you belong, Bob, with the many others who have contributed time and talent to make this program heard on more stations than any other program in the history of American radio and to convey the opportunities in the new peacetime army. Well, C.P., it was, it was an honor to appear for such an important sponsor, but I'm sure your audience wants to know the playbill for next time. Next week, Bob, we present that prominent Hollywood star, Jess Barker, in a timely story with a delightful climax titled Apartment for Rent. I'm sure you won't want to miss it. Again, our thanks to Robert Hutton, who appeared through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges the appearances of all motion picture stars on this program. So join us next week on Proudly We Hail, soon to be a full half-hour program. And until next week, this is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. Uh-huh.